It's a big, noisy universe of stocks out there. Welcome to Goodbye or Goodbye. And that's where we help you sift through that noise to figure out the best moves for your portfolio. Today, we're focusing on real estate, which had a rocky year last year. A lot of debate about whether it indeed was a good investment and also debate about Maybe it wasn't as monolithic as it looked here. I want to bring in Adam Johnson now of Bullseye Brief. He is going to help us sift through uh, this real estate se se uh, sector today. So let's focus on real estate investment trusts. And yep. let's kick it right off and look at your goodbye, the, the stock you like here. It's Alexandria real estate here. I actually think it's a great buy, Julie, a as opposed to the buy. other. As are opposed to the to, other. Are we going to have to change the, change the name of the segment? <laughs> great buy or get out of here. Uh, this is my great buy or good buy, um, as you like to say. A couple of bullet points just to get you acquainted with it. Uh, focused. This company builds very specific purpose-built uh, real estate. They um, sell only, they develop only for the um, life sciences sector. So biotechnology companies, big biopharma companies. It's very specialized. These companies need laboratories that's got to have the specialized HVAC, mm -hmm. right, to get poisonous toxins out, um, all kinds of filtering. They like to have production spaces so they can have all their meetings on stage. Um, they do atriums, and this is key, Jules. They only build next to universities so mm. that there's already infrastructure there and a desire for it. So, Interesting. Um, Focused, All purpose right. built. Let's talk about the second part then. The tenants you say tend to stay there. There's not a lot. Yeah. You know, we look at other parts of real estate. People yeah. move in, people move out. Yep. In uh, this one, not necessarily the case? No, because they are purpose built. In other words, mm. Alexandria won't actually develop a property until it's already um, pre leased by about 80%. Right? So it's effectively already paid for. That's how they're able to get the loans and lock in the margin. So the tenants, once they ask Alexander to build these properties for them, they stick around. It's very sticky. Okay. And then finally, you say that there is stable cash flow at this point. Because business. of that stickiness. Yeah. Yeah. And as a matter of fact, uh, their occupancy right now, you probably find this surprising. I certainly did until I ran the numbers. 96 percent. Wow. That so for all the gloom level. and doom about real estate, 96% occupancy, and they're renewing leases at 6% um, increases. So uh, I like ARE very much. Uh, right. I'm long it as are my clients. Okay, that's a good disclosure to have. Yeah. We, we like to ask people what the risk to the potential bull sure. case is. And here you say, could we see healthcare markets get crimped by regulation, for example? Potentially. Yeah, I mean, if, if, if you just, and again, we have to think big picture here, but you know, if in fact um, the, uh, the Washington steamroller were to uh, really go after drug pricing, I know they always say that during election years as they are right now, but if that actually were to uh, gather momentum, then in theory that would crimp um, uh, profits at, right. at some of these companies, and so they might not be able to spend the money on this premium well, real estate. And the other thing I would ask just briefly before we move on to the one that you would avoid is, yeah. you know, what kind of growth is this company seeing? In other words, because- Six, seven, eight percent annual. Okay, so we're not talking about huge no. leaps and bounds of growth, but a steady grower. A is steady what you're grower, at and here. what attracted to me, you know, I run the Bullseye American Ingenuity Fund. There's right. a lot of technology. You don't usually think of real estate as ingenious, right? But the way they target the real estate, I think, is ingenious. And I would also add that the stock was trading, oh, about six weeks ago at a 10 year. Uh, valuation low. Oh, you don't often see a high quality company trade that low. Okay, so let's talk about the company that you want to avoid, and yes. it is in the dreaded office. Wouldn't space. touch it. We're Not with a 10 foot pole. SL Green here. That's your <laughs> goodbye. goodbye. So let's run through it here. Concentrated in NYC. I, I, if I'm not mistaken, this is one of the, if not the largest REITs in New York City. Oh, it's the largest one. Hands yeah. down, they own 59 properties here in yeah. New York City. That's part of the problem, Julie. Mm. Uh, I mean, this is the tip of the spear. If you talk about the problems with commercial real estate and office space and the fact that at least here in New York, only about 53% of workers are back in the building. Right? We know so, that anecdotally, certainly. Yeah, yeah. So concentrated New York, um, that's a big problem. Okay, let's talk about problem number two for you. Inconsistent property mix. What does that mean? So. On the one hand, SL Green has got some beautiful properties here. In fact, if you know one Vanderbilt right next to Grand Central, arguably probably the prettiest, most impressive new building in New York City. The problem is that's only one, and they're along 59 buildings, and they've got some real duds, like the old Bear Stearns, 245 Park Avenue, mm. a bunch of buildings, big, blocky, clumsy concrete buildings on 3rd Avenue. What do you do with them? That's the problem. So it's an inconsistent property mix. Okay, and then thing number three here, 10 and 50 are in alt 
yeah. strategy. Watch out. You remember um, back in uh, 2008, Citibank had good bank, bad bank. Mm -hmm. They put all the bad assets in the bad bank. Well, they put 10 of their uh, 50 buildings, 59 buildings, in the alternate strategy portfolio. Mm. In other words, we don't know what to do with them. We can't sell them, we can't lease them, they're just sitting there, do we repurpose them? Do we knock them down, develop, redevelop? Um, so that's a concern, that alt strategy group. Okay, so the risk to this downside case is, yeah. Everybody comes back. Yeah, everything's All of great. A <laughs> you know, right? Come back in. The water's fine. Yeah, I mean, you look at the um, Wall Street Bank CEOs, and they've all said you got to get back in. Right. David Solomon at Goldman, on and on. Uh, Jamie Dimon at, at J.P. Morgan, get back in the office. And actually, I'm a believer in that. You know, mentoring happens in the office. It doesn't happen when kids are at home, not working with uh, with peers or with uh, seniors to uh, you know show them the way it's done. Um, so if everybody comes back to work, okay, I guess they'll agree to be just fine. But yes. it doesn't seem to be going that way. It doesn't feel that way. And then we've got sort of a bonus chart looking yeah. at these two companies and really comparing them here. When I we talk this. about REITs, occupancy is really important here, right? What percentage is the op occupancy? And there's yeah. definitely a clear divide between these two guys. Oh, a clear divide. And by the way, hats off to your, produ your producers for making this chart because this says it all, right? Occupancy at Alexandria Real Estate, 96% versus SL Green, 89. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, you, you were saying earlier, you're surprised it's as high as 89. It sounds like it ought to be 78, but it's 89, fine. Uh, amount of debt, less than 20% of ARE's debt comes due in the next four years, mm -hmm. whereas more than 60% of SL Green's debt comes due. So they've got this debt problem. They're gonna have to refinance, and obviously rates are higher. Yeah, higher rates, yes, And by exactly. the way, um, half of the debt at SL Green is floating rate. Oh dear. So, you know, they yeah. get squeezed on both fronts. And then you just look at sentiment, the way the street is uh, looking at these stocks. 12 buys on ARE, no holds, only one sell. Yeah. And that's a recent one, versus four, seven, and seven. So the street doesn't like, I don't like SL Green, the street doesn't like SL Green, and you gotta respect that that kind of sentiment. I tend to be a contrarian, but not when it comes to SL Green. This is one where I agree with the street, I agree with the market's view, and I don't want to touch it. But ARE, another story. Okay, Adam, I'm going to recap, if I okay. can, what we have talked about today. So you're saying buy Alexandria Real Estate based on that focused uh, portfolio, yeah. the loyal customer base, positive cash flow. And the other side, you say, avoid SL Green at all costs based on its not so diverse portfolio of buildings here in New York City, high debt, low occupancy. Adam Johnson, what a uh, pleasure to see you. Great and, being with you, Julie and Hyman. And be on TV with you once again.